Hi everybody. I thought that today I might show you an artifact from the Rhodesian Bush War, something that I hope uh, will be of some interest to you. It's a small handbook known as an aid memoir, uh, produced jointly by the 5th and 1st Battalions of the Rhodesia Regiment. Uh, you can see our badge on the cover. Um, and it contains a wealth of information uh, regarding bush warfare. In a moment I'll lay it flat and I'll open the pages slowly so that uh, if you uh, would like to you could take uh, screenshots. Perhaps by way of introduction I could just page through this quickly and you can see the design of the layout. In the um, front page is a protractor. I won't take it out of its sleeve now. It's been there for many many years. I don't want to disturb it unnecessarily. And then um, the rest of the booklet is composed of uh, cards, printed cards. Um, they're on a various colored board and each color represents something. The white sections are matters relating to reporting. And then blue, there are a succession of blue cards here. They are all related to uh, aircraft. Various details concerning that. Runways. Quite a large section, actually. Uh, aircraft recognition. And I'm sure you can recognize the shape of the MiG there and an earlier model on the next page. Well, we expected to see Russian craft uh, fly in our skies, but as it uh, turned out, it, it never happened. The pink cards are all related to matters uh, concerning first aid. Um, Kazovac, dealing with wounds, injuries, Yellow is a section concerning orders, the sort of things one needs to be aware of regarding all sorts of aspects. I see there's convoys, there's base camps, uh, and it continues like that. Green is related to uh, radio communications. You can see the different channels here on this page. Um, all very useful information, the different um, code words for various branches of the security forces. Battle appreciation. Grenades, flares. All stuff that's important to know, but sometimes too detailed to, to remember accurately. Claymore mines, ambushes, planning an ambush, and then a section here right at the end on navigation. I must say we were quite casual about our voice procedure. We watched the security of course, but um, uh, most of the time we, we used a lot of slang and we used a lot of informality. And um, I was looking in this little booklet on one occasion out in the bush when I located some spoor. And I would normally just have uh, radioed in and just told them that I'd found spoor and uh, that I was continuing the follow up and, uh, you know, almost on, in a conversational way. <laughs> but on this occasion, I decided to use the method as outlined here in the aid memoir. <laughs> Didn't want to tease the platoon commander or the platoon sergeant, so I thought let me rather go a little bit further away. So I, I called up the, um, uh, the company HQ and uh, uh, the conversation went uh, something like this. Uh, three, three, one alpha. Three, go. Three, one alpha, ready to copy the trip? Yeah, send. Three, one alpha, found spur. Go. Para alpha, ready to copy shackles? Yeah, go. Shackles on, Alpha, Charlie, Echo, Delta, Lima, Zulu. Shackles off, Roger so far. Yeah, go. 
Para Bravo, figures three. Para Charlie, northwest, toward feature beginning with Zulu. Copied that? Yeah. Para Delta, figures 12. Para Echo, aerial and ground. Para Foxtrot, two Alpha Kilos, one Romeo Papa Delta. Have you copied that? Yeah, copied. Para Golf, will follow up till dusk. Roger. Wait one. <laughs> he didn't have a clue what I was talking about and I knew it. Here's a section on chest wounds. Never a very pleasant thing when uh, a soldier has been hit perhaps in the side and the bullet has entered his lungs. It's quite a serious business to deal with. And um, the procedure is laid out here that um, it's necessary to, uh, to clean and cover the wound and uh, to make it airtight very quickly. And uh, we would do this by covering the wound and then using the plastic bag that the dressings uh, were supplied in. We cut that very carefully into a square and place this over the, the wound and then using some adhesive tape, sticking plaster uh, in the shock pack to tape the, uh, the plastic down very, very securely onto the man's chest so that no, no air can uh, enter the wound and into the lung uh, that way. And then if the wound was on the side, to turn the man so that he's actually lying on the wounded side so that the unaffected lung uh, is unhindered and is free to, to do its work and to, to sustain him and keep him alive. Then of course it's very important to get a, a person in this condition uh, to proper medical care as soon as possible. Here's a section on orders for patrols. In other words, these are the, uh, the things that a section leader would cover with his men before setting out on patrol. It's all very straightforward. What enemy might be expected in the area where they will be patrolling, their strength, weapons, dress, the attitude of the locals toward the security forces or toward the enemy, uh, action to take uh, concerning a curfew. And then there's an interesting one there under 11, <laughs> poaching. Uh, it seems that hunting is just in the Rhodesian's blood. And even though there's a war going on, uh, men were quite inclined to, to let rip at, uh, at any game that they happened to come across. So um, uh, national parks and wildlife were pulling their hair out with the army throughout the war on this matter of poaching. And it just seemed to be something that, that never really went away. On the other side of the page over there, action, what to do if you meet locals, if you meet the enemy, well, of course you kill them. Action if ambushed, um, action if lost. Well, what we would do is, um, you know, as you're patrolling, you don't just put your head down and, and just go through the bush hour after hour. Uh, no, you'll stop for a break every now and then uh, so that you can rest. And also so you can just sit quietly and listen. And um, wherever your last stop was, that becomes your rendezvous, rendezvous point. So if, if you're ambushed or if you're lost and you, you, you who've been separated from the rest of the, the call sign, what you do is you, you make your way back to where you had your last smoke break. That is where everybody will gather again. So that was pretty standard. This page details the action to be taken in the event of a vehicle ambush. They drilled this into us over and over and over again. We would be taken onto a lonely road somewhere and uh, mock ambushes would be set up and we would have to practice for hour after hour. Uh, <clears throat> the vehicle that is caught in the killing ground had to try and get out of the killing ground and then stop and the men would debus, form an extended line and then sweep back onto the enemy catching him on one of his flanks. And so, and so this was a drill that was hammered into us. Well, it so happened that uh, when a real ambush took place, uh, at some point, um, a bullet went through the cab and the driver, a huge Greek, uh, was nearly hit. And 
you would think that this would have frightened him, but it didn't frighten him, it threw him into a rage. And so everything that he had been taught about uh, driving out of the killing ground just went out of his head. And in anger, he swung his wheel, um, left the, the road, went careering into the bush and started charging the enemy with the uh, road F45. Well, of course, they jumped to their feet when they saw the truck bearing down on them. And I think he rode over about three or four of them before the truck finally came to a stop. But uh, it was the end of the ambush. The enemy scattered and ran away. And uh, there were these um, severely wounded gooks lying on the ground after having been trampled by a, a, a runaway truck. Here is a section on map reading, but I'd like to cover this subject in a little bit more greater detail, perhaps in a separate movie. The Southern Cross is the easiest way to find the South Pole at night. You'll recognize these stars easily in the Southern Hemisphere. The cross is very prominent. Uh, watch out, there is a false cross, but look for the pointers. They turn in the night sky in this direction, and the cross goes before the pointers. In your mind, project a line across the sky from the pointers and from the cross and where they intersect at that point, that is the pivot point. They'll be turning around that point all night. From that point down to the horizon, drop a line. And where it meets the horizon, that is the South Pole. Nothing could be simpler. You'll always find your way around the bush at night just with using these stars. Right at the back of the booklet, uh, is this little card. On the opposite side, um, it gives a little introduction and it goes on to say which uh, private companies helped sponsor it. Now it's important to notice that this was not an army publication. This isn't something that the government produced and, and handed out um, to its troops. This was something that somebody had a vision for doing and um, got other people involved and uh, finally produced this for one reason only that the soldiers of our battalion might be more efficient and at the bottom of this um, card we can see the name of the gentleman who was a uh, principal in its production and it uh, was Sergeant Welland from 5RR it was done purely out of a uh, patriotic spirit for their country, a love for their land. And that was what Rhodesian society was like. People went out of the way to do the best that they could in order that civilization might survive in that part of the world. And we are grateful to Sergeant Welland and, and his team for producing this fine booklet. This is a really excellent uh, article a quality item. Uh, I've had it for many, many years. It was always with me in my patrol jacket. I refer to it often. Uh, when I had um, time on my hands, I would page through it and try and memorize the information it contained. Uh, it's many decades old, and yet look at it. It's not tattered. It's in very good condition. Uh, I must say that the people that produced this uh, really went the extra mile in producing something that would be durable and long-lasting, and, and so it has. It's something I cherish very much. Um, I'm very happy to have it. It's a very rare item. You will not see many of these. Well, as always, let me just conclude by thanking you again for your gracious comments, your kind remarks, uh, your encouraging words, uh, they're all very much appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, until next time, keep well and take care. All the very best.